we're going to have our second speaker now, who is Victoria Cerise. She is, uh, well, she's been pro-life for her entire life, but she became an activist in the movement when she revived the pro-life club on her college campus. Since reviving that club, Victoria was able to host many events and even had Kristen Hawkins, the president of Students for Life of America on her campus. Afterwards, she founded New Jersey Pro-Life Future, which was a young pro-life adult group, and now lives in Cincinnati, Ohio, where she has founded Cincinnati Pro-Life Future. And Victoria will be speaking to us about her journey of establishing a pro-life group on her campus and why it's important to stand your ground no matter what opposition opposition no opposition you may face so thank you very much victoria for being here today and sharing your experiences with all of us thank you can you hear me okay mm -hmm. all right perfect okay so thanks for that introduction um as um i was introduced um i am victoria cerise um i live in cincinnati ohio i am a wife i'm a professional photographer i'm also a registered nurse and um when i was asked to Speak to you guys tonight. Um, I was a little hesitant because I don't have like some crazy story of being like um, pro-choice and then I was pro-life and I have this like amazing testimony or anything like that. Um, I was always raised pro-life. I was raised Catholic. Um, so I didn't feel like I had this crazy story, but kind of looking back at all that I've been able to do um, so far in the pro-life movement, um, I just want to share a little bit of that and give you guys some encouragement and to help you guys not, not feel alone, even though it can be very easy to feel alone in this movement. And there's, there's so much value that you all have. Um, so I'm going to share a little bit about that. So like I said, I was raised pro-life. Um, whenever I like would talk about abortion with people I knew, everybody agreed with me. Um, so I kind of had a little bit of like this, I guess, assumption that the people who were pro-abortion, um, pro pro-choice people were more like the extremist and then and like because because everybody around me was pro-life. So um I knew that they existed, but I never really saw them in my own daily life. But I think that's just the circle that I was around. Um I, I, during my teenage years, I started going to the March for Life. And if you haven't gone, I would highly encourage you to go to the March for Life. It is awesome. It is incredible. I really believe that every single person needs to go to the March for Life at least once in their life. That's awesome that you guys are going to be going in January. You guys are going to have a great time. It's incredible. And like I said, it, it helps so much. Just like you don't feel alone. There's thousands of people that are around your age too, like young adults that are coming together and standing up for it, um, pro-life which is awesome. So I've gone to probably about five of them. And one year I went and, um, you know, we're marching along and I saw somebody hold a sign that said, is this the only pro-life thing you're doing all year? And my initial reaction was like a little bit of negativity, right? I was, I saw the sign. Okay. Is this the only pro-life thing you're doing all year? Like, um, I don't really know what you're trying to get at, you know, in my, in my, this is all in my mind. Right. And um, so I was a little bit negative towards that sign. And then I realized that it, it kind of was true in my life. That was really like the only pro-life thing that I was doing. I would go to the March for Life. Occasionally I would, uh, you know, pray for an end to abortion, but that was pretty much the only thing that I was really doing. And so I, I started to contemplate like, well, what can I do as like a young adult, as a I know a young college student do in the pro-life movement. And at the time I was going to community college, I was in the process of transferring um, for nursing school um, to a four-year college. When I took a tour of the campus that I decided to go to, um, it's called the, the College of New Jersey, TCNJ, I saw that there was a pro-life sign on campus. And I thought that was incredible. Like at a state college, at a liberal college, there was a pro-life sign. So I knew that there was a pro-life club on campus and I knew I wanted to be a part of it. Um, so when I, when I became a student at TCNJ, I emailed the pro-life um, club and tried to like get, uh, get to be like a member of this club. It took a while before I got a response. And when I got the response, I, it was 
Uh, very unfortunate news. Basically, the pro-life club had died out. So there was no pro-life club anymore, essentially. And um, I was really like sad to hear that, um, that basically like nobody wanted to do this anymore. Um, the guy who was running it um, was a senior and he basically said nobody else was helping him. Nobody wanted to do it. So he um, kind of just decided to like, just let it go. And so there's me as a transfer student um, <laughs> receiving this news, like being super sad that the pro-life club is dead on this campus. And of course, initial reaction is, oh man, <laughs> do I need to take this over? Is this gonna be the thing that that sign was indicating? Like, oh man, I guess maybe I need to take this over. But of course, initial reactions are, I'm scared. I don't know what I'm doing. Like I said, I, pretty much everybody that I talked to about abortion before was already on my side. So I don't know how to talk to somebody who like is pro-abortion. I also never talked to anybody who's had an abortion, which is pretty likely on a college campus. So I was really like nervous about all of that. Um, and then, so this is all in my mind. And then I was presented with the, so do you want to take it over? <laughs> and um, so it wasn't just me like thinking it, it was somebody actually like asking like, will you do this? And so I was definitely like nervous about it, but I like really prayed about it and thought about it. And I realized like, if there's one thing that I'm gonna do during my college time here, this is gonna be the thing I'm gonna do. So I took it over and that sounds really cool, right? Like, oh, you revived your college campus club, like that's so cool. But it was like a very slow process. <laughs> like I said, I was a transfer. I was also a commuter. I was in nursing school, um, but I didn't really know anybody on campus, let alone anybody who is pro-life. I mean, this is a liberal college campus. I'm in the minority here. Um, like nobody, like I don't really know anybody and I only know nursing students and all of them are pretty much against what I'm saying. So <laughs> that was a huge challenge to overcome. So I would stay late on campus, like in the library since I had no dorm to stay on. And I would stay for hours. I'd prepare a presentation for like one person to show up or nobody to show up. And I was really defeated. I was really disappointed. And I remember like thinking like, I don't know if I can do this. I, there, I don't know any person on this college campus who like really agrees with me or if they agree with me is willing to like stand up and actually do this. Um, and cause there's, there were pro-life people. I know that there are pro-life people there, but there are, you know, it's very hard to get people to stand up for what like is right and stand up for this issue, especially when you know you're gonna be in the minority. So I was like very like on the brink of like giving up when I think God was like, okay, I got to give her something. <laughs> She's going a little crazy. So um, two people came in my life that helped so much. One of them was Kate Maloney. She is a regional coordinator with Students for Life. And she was like a wealth of knowledge. And she like her personality was amazing. She helped so much. And Students for Life, if you aren't, I think you guys are already connected with them, but Students for Life is incredible. They're there as a resource for students, student groups. So you don't have to create a lot of content. They help you with events and they just like help you keep going. Because they know that you as a student are pretty busy, which was awesome. And then another student came into my life and she was just as passionate about the pro-life movement as I was. And I was like, okay, good. I have, there's me, I, there's three of us. Only two of us are students, but that's okay. We can do this. And so between the two students and the students for life, we were able to recruit a few more members. And by a few, I mean, literally there was like five of us in total. And that might not sound like a lot. And five is not a lot of people. I promise you that. But I will say like, they, I know they always say that there's power in numbers. And that is true. There are power in numbers. But there's way more power in a few people who are so passionate and so willing to stand up for what's right than having 50 people that are like, eh, you know, that, yeah, I'm pro-life, but I'm not going to do anything about it, you know? So even though there was only five of us, we were able to do so much on our college campus. We had 
different tabling events. We started talking to people and I had to get really like scared. I was so scared because like I said, I never really talked to anyone who didn't agree with me. And I started to talk to people who did like a lot of people who didn't agree with me. So um, Students for Life helped equip us with like a lot of like um, arguments um, to use and like different tactics and stuff like that. But primarily leading with compassion because there's so much divide in this movement. And I think a lot of it has to do with just assumptions about each other and also just like hatred as well. And so leading with compassion and showing that you care helps so much, even if the other person does not show any sort of compassion. Um, <laughs> but so we would do tabling events. We hope had Kristen Hawkins on our campus. That was incredible. She's the president of Students for Life, if you guys don't know. She came to our campus and gave a whole presentation. It was awesome. <laughs> um, so we're able to have her on our campus. We had um, different fundraisers similar to this where we donated items to pregnancy centers, which was really cool. We were able to kind of get some pro-choice people to at least agree with us on certain topics. And we had um, like multiple people come and help write notes to women who were post-abortive um, to help them with their healing process. Um, we had people write letters to women who just found out that they're pregnant and it's unexpected pregnancy. So we were able to find some common ground, um, which was really cool. And then one of our biggest things on campus was we had a graveyard for the innocent, for the unborn. And so we represented um, the amount of abortions that happen in New Jersey every single month, um, which is around 3,000 every single month. month. And so we had about 300 flags, um, each flag represented 10. And we had that on our campus for almost a week. We were supposed to have it for a week. And so many people saw it. It was in like a really prime location and really just like showing, like visually, I, I think visuals are super important and visually showing how many abortions are happening in the state alone, not in the country, not in the world, but in the state. And that really, showed up a, a lot of emotions in a lot of different people and it ended up getting vandalized um, in broad daylight, which was kind of crazy. We got it on video. It kind of went viral <laughs> um, amongst the pro-life community. But I will say, we, like I said, we had like five people that were in our club that were like actually doing stuff. And we were able to do so much. I honestly believe that we were one of the most active clubs on our campus with just those five people. So I really want to encourage you that even though there, you know, I, I know everybody on here is from all different parts of the US and even I think there's some people outside the US, which is also really cool. Um, so I just want you to like be able, like just encourage you that you don't need to have a ton of people in your group or in your community especially when you're on a college campus to do something about this movement and you can and it's amazing and incredible all you can accomplish and when you just have a like a few people and a lot of passion and a lot of like encouragement and willpower and perseverance to keep going um so that all sounds really cool um but I want to tell you guys a little bit about like things that you can do in the pro-life movement as I know we have all different ages here. Um, I think this group is awesome. And I totally encourage you to like keep getting involved and keep doing things, especially um, like a virtual virtual events or this is awesome. This is so clever. I wouldn't have even have thought about something like this. So this is really cool. But as you leave high school um, and you enter into college or into your job, or you know whatever you guys end up doing after high school, I really want you to, to encourage you to keep going in this movement. You're not gonna necessarily always have people around you like this kind of community, which is awesome. Um, and definitely still stay connected, but you might not always have these people. And I want you to still feel encouraged to keep going and that there's stuff that you can do because especially like after college, for me, I was like, what am I gonna do? Like, what can I do in the pro-life movement? And so Students for Life has something that's really, really cool. Um, 
for uh, post-college students, um, or if you decide not to go to college, it's called Pro-Life Future. And so there's, I think, around 12 chapters in the U.S. right now, um, but you can start one in your area. And that's what I did after college. I started this thing called New Jersey Pro-Life Future because I was still living in New Jersey at the time. And basically it's meant for young adults to get together and do activism like you would do on like a college campus or in high school. And you can get together and still do stuff. And Students for Life still provides you like all the cool resources that they have and all that stuff. Um, and then I started it out here in uh, Cincinnati um, and the same thing. And like I said, you don't have to have a ton of people in your group. You just have to have passionate people. So, um, a couple of the things that you can do in the movement. I know we have some parents on here as well. So I have a bunch of different things that you can do depending on your different stages in life. So firstly, obviously, like what we're doing with this event, you can donate, which is so awesome. There are so many amazing organizations you can donate for. And I think it's great that we have raised over $1,000. That is something to like be proud of. That is a lot of money and you know that they're gonna do so much good with that money and it's going to like a place that's awesome. I mean, the videos are so cool. Um, so <laughs> I know that they're gonna do so many good things and that like, even if it's literally $5, $5 is going to help so much, like more than you would spend $5 on like a Starbucks drink or whatever, you know? <laughs> um, like it's going to help so much. So if you can, occasionally not just like you know an annual event but if you're able to monthly um donate that's awesome or every you know every few months that's something really cool and it doesn't take up a lot of your time so if you don't have time to spend um that is something that's really cool another thing is also like hosting events so something like this like the virtual event is super cool you can also host events in your local area i know for us new jersey pro-life future we did a fundraiser dance and we were able to raise $3,000 for a pregnancy center. And it was a really fun event too, because we had a dance, we had like a bunch of donations. It was really, really fun. So that's another idea of something that you can do. Um, you can also pray outside abortion clinics. Um, prayer is super important. And especially if you do public prayer, there's been so many statistics that like I know Abby Johnson has mentioned that there were so many no-shows at her Planned Parenthood when people were praying outside the abortion clinic. That is so important. Prayer um, in private is important too, but public prayer, making a stand is so, so valuable. It is amazing. Um, I wouldn't encourage you to do it like by yourself. I would say go with a group, but it's, it's incredible the like impact that it can. Yes, Abby Johnson from Unplanned, yes. So I really would encourage you to do that. Um, I would also encourage you, you guys already have a student group, but I would encourage you once, if, you, if any of you guys decide to go to college, or even if you don't decide to go to college, create some sort of group. If you're a parent, you can have like a parent's group, like you can, you can basically create your own thing, but there is something, there is a lot of power in community and not feeling alone. And people who don't feel alone are more willing to speak out about injustices of the world. If you feel like you're the only person that has this opinion, um, and sometimes you are the only person that has that opinion in an area, but if you remember that you're not alone, it helps so much. So having community is awesome. And then definitely volunteering at pregnancy centers. So you guys saw the video. I volunteer at a pregnancy center. I just started volunteering at one this year. And I've done a lot of stuff in the pro-life movement. I've done, you know, a lot of student stuff, talking to people about abortion and stuff like that, um, going to lots of different events. But I have never seen like how much value there is in the pro-life movement than like actually talking to the woman who is considering having an abortion or actually in the, like talking to the woman who is facing an unexpected pregnancy, there's so much value in that. And that might sound really scary and it is kind of scary sometimes, but there's so much you can do and you can help 
people that like have never seen love in their life, like true, they've never seen unconditional love before, before meeting you. And it's sad to say, but it's so true. And there's so much value that you can do. There are pregnancy centers all over the US. I think it's HairNet that you can look up local um, pregnancy centers. Um, that are pro-life, um, because I would say just be careful, because if you just look at pregnancy center, it, sometimes like abortion clinics will show up as well. Um, so a couple of ways you can like support pregnancy centers are, of course, hosting events like this, raising, oh, uh, option online. Okay, cool. Um, you can provide monet uh, monetary donations, which is awesome. You can also provide physical donations. Um, like, you know, baby clothes, diapers, wipes, I would call each clinic and make sure and see what they actually need and what they're um, in need for. And then obviously you can work with the clients firsthand, sitting face to face with somebody who is facing an un unexpected pregnancy. There, like I said, I've never seen so much value. <laughs> like I've, there's, there's value in every aspect of the pro-life movement, don't get me wrong but that specific one actually being face to face with a woman who is considering abortion is incredible there's just there's just so much there's so much field in that i don't know i don't know how to describe it but <laughs> there's like it's just incredible what you can do to help help these people and then of course if that sounds like a lot for you to do like or it's too much emotionally to handle um sorting like uh donations and stuff like that that is super, super helpful as well. Um, one thing I just want to say that I forgot to mention earlier is um, I do think prayer is super important. And um, like I said, public prayer is super important to you. Um, but I think sometimes as pro-lifers, we just like say, okay, we'll just pray to end abortion and that's all we're going to do. And I want to discourage you from that. I don't want to discourage you from praying, still pray for sure. But I really like the quote, like work as if it depended on you and um, pray as if it depended on God. So we need to do both in like in both any aspect of our life, we need to do both, right? So we need to pray as if it depends on God, but we also need to work as, as it depends on us. God, like, you know, as it, like you guys are students, right? If you were going to take a test, you can't just pray that God will like help you through it. I mean, you can sometimes, um, <laughs> but you still have to study. So the same thing goes with the pro-life movement. We need you guys to like, I, hopefully this is firing you up to keep going and to keep going, like keep um, being involved in the pro-life movement. But I really want to encourage you to keep doing events like this, keep volunteering keep donating and keep fighting the good fight. <laughs> um, yeah, if anyone has any questions, you guys can, um, on the website, I think my Instagram is linked. So you guys can direct them towards me if you like have more questions about um, anything pro-life, starting a pro-life group or anything like that. But I think that's all I have for you guys. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And I hope you guys have a good night. <laughs>